Hello friends, uh, if you are ventilating a patient, a pediatric or the neonatal patient, then there are certain basic things which we all as a physician or the intensivist should know. Uh, these are very basic things, be it the oxygen source, the compressor, right from there, the total hardware, the ventilator machine itself and uh, then we go ahead and uh, ventilate the patient. So in this series of three videos, three or four videos, I will be trying to describe those things in detail. So hi, myself Dr. Kanjan Sa, I am pediatric intensivist at Sneha Children Hospital and welcome to this, uh, this video series on uh, how to start a patient on ventilator. Do have a look. So hi, first uh, we need to know about the compressed gases and the control sources. So most modern uh, ventilators are powered by compressed gases and the control system. So you have oxygen outlet or and the compressed air uh, outlet. So compressed air if you talk about first it can be either centrally mounted or you may have a compressor inbuilt within the ventilator. Coming to the oxygen outlet, oxygen outlet either it can be a central or you have an oxygen source or the bottle to which it is attached. Both the things compressed air as well as oxygen has to be at the 60 psi that is pounds per square inch the pressure that much is required for two purposes the, for, uh, the that much pressure is required for ventilator to run as well as the drive the gas flow into the patient. Uh, both air and oxygen they are dry so they needs to be they are dry and cold it needs to be warmed and humidified before they reach the patient. Also there is a control system which uh, is basically a software that decides the how much air and oxygen you want to give to the patient. So this is the first part on the if you know the, say the hardware or you know the basic anatomy of the ventilators. Uh, having discussed about the air and the oxygen now uh, we discuss about the ventilator or the monitor itself. So the monitor of the ventilator or ventilator has many pressure gauges and also for sensors for volume and that senses the volume and the flow. Uh, there are many you know knobs depending on the screen now many monitors are touch screen many, many have the knobs so you need to understand whichever ventilator you're using but basically what they have that you have you have a set of parameters which can be adjusted from those knobs also you have alarm limits which are universally for high and low pressure and the oxygen concentration is universally alarmed apart from that other alarms are also there and last but not the least, many ventilators have graphical uh, presentation of uh, the various patient ventilator interactions which help you gauge the situation in a better way. At times you get to know many uh, clinical, uh, many things prior to the clinical uh, deterioration or that happens. Be it leak or you know that that can be sensed or seen by just looking at the ventilator graphics. So this was about the monitors, uh, we'll go and have a look at that. So having discussed about first or the oxygen and the central air, then the ventilator itself. The third thing is important is the ventilator, ventilator, ventilator circuits. So there are disposable as well as reusable circuits are, are, are there. As far as sterility is maintained, uh, disposable uh, circuits or reusable can be used. Uh, then the routine changing of the ventilator circuits are not advised unless it's soiled because frequent changing may lead to high incidence of WAP it is what's seen. Then coming to the uh, circuit on, on a further side if the heated wire circuit with heated wire on the inspiratory uh, limb is what advised also if it is available in expiratory side it is well and good. Apart from that a water trepo also in the both the side is what is advocated so that you know you always keep that water trap at the level below the uh, patient side so that the whatever water gets condensed is it gets drained into that water trap and does not go into the patient side which in case which if it goes can increase the incidence of WAP ventilator associated pneumonia so this was about the ventilator circuit it is important to understand about the compressible volume of the ventilator circuit because it may not be significant for uh, you know elder sib or elder kids but for neonates or the infants uh, that plays a significant role. 
so basically whatever amount of the air that comes out from the inspiratory port of the ventilator gets divided into the ventilator circuit and the patient itself so the that can be a large proportion if it is you are ventilating a neonate so it is important to, to remember the incompressible volume what is that so basically compressible volume never reaches the patient but it distends the circuit during the positive pressure of ventilation so uh, when the circuits are stiff the compressible volumes is less and when the cir circuits are less stiff or, or compliant then the that compressible uh, volume is higher a manufacturer may uh, you know uh, uh, write the compressible volume which can be 0.8 to 2 uh, you know ml per centimeter of water so that is what you need to do no so why this was important to know that whenever you are passing a pre-use check on the ventilator ventilator will calculate the compressible volume and while displaying you about the vte that is expiratory tidal volume that volume gets uh, subtracted and you get the exact expiratory volume so make sure you uh, whenever you are putting a patient on a ventilator the pre-use check has to be uh, done because as i said the compressible volume and many other parameters needs to be uh, gauged by the ventilator so the fourth thing before attaching a patient on the ventilator is about humidifiers or humidification so first we learned about uh, compressed air and oxygen then the monitors and ventilator itself then comes the ventilator circuit and now the humidifier so when we are breathing air the nose humidifies and the air which reaches carina is around 30 uh, at the temperature of around 30 to 35 degrees centigrade and is 80 to 95 percent uh, humidity is there once that gets bypassed by artificial airway the dry air which goes in can lead to many complications like drying of secretion inspiration of secretions erosion of the epithelium atelectasis increased work of breathing leading to increased secretions excessive uh, water loss as well as hypothermia so these all complications may happen if the patient is not well humidified my mentor used to say that if you are ventilating a child without humidification you're doing a crime you should not do that so uh, when uh, humidification is must so what are the options we have for the humidifications there are two types one is active uh, humidifier where you know you have a humidifier uh, which is attached inside the circuit and uh, the air gets warm humidified there are sensors attached to it and the, that air goes to uh, the uh, inside the patient uh, then second type is HME that is hum humidify moisture exchanger so basically they are also called the passive nose because they are attached to the uh, you know interface at the ET tube and what it does is that it uh, whatever the air is exhaled from that it absorbs the moisture and it humidifies the air there were some reports of uh, less incidence of WAP by uh, HMEs uh, reason being the air is not uh, the circuit is not soiled with a lot of condensation of water which happens by uh, in the uh, humidifier uh, circuit but again it is not uh, there no uh, it is not reported much uh, HMEs are usually we advocate where a lesser uh, duration of ventilation is in anticipated three to four days max that's why and uh, we use it otherwise in younger children and children it's the humid or new nates uh, uh, active humidification is what uh, needed also when there are high secretions pulmonary edema and those situations where you know hmes won't help you will have to use the uh, the active uh, humidification so friend this was about before you attach a patient what four things you need to take care of first no so i'll just briefly revise first you have to have your oxygen source as well as the compressor well in place and functioning well with the pressure required was 60 psi then you know your ventilator whichever ventilator you are using know the knobs the pressures and all about the alarms about what are the alarms are there and if there are ventil uh, ventilator graphics are there get used to it then third the ventilator, ventilator circuits so uh, different types of circuits we discussed and uh, also we need to uh, compressible air volume in the circuit we should remember and always we should pass a test prior to putting a patient on that ventilator and last the humidification so once this all four things is done 
you go and set the patient on ventilator. Uh, thank you friend, thank you for watching this video. Uh, myself as I said Dr. Kanjan Shah from Sneha Hospital. Uh, if you are new kindly subscribe to channel Thinkpedia. Thank you very much.